Hello friends, welcome back to another technical analysis. Here we have Alex Saltzman throwing the weight. Just want to let you guys know that if you're interested in getting a technical analysis of your own, go to gripandrip.co and sign up. It's $20 for an in-depth technical analysis, $15 if you sign up for a monthly subscription. You know, submit a video to me once a month and get consistent technical feedback and direction from your boy. Technical cues. I get to help point out what's going wrong or what's going right in your throw steering you in the right direction. So I'm here for I'm happy to help. So gripandrip.co, C-O, go check it out, sign up, and uh, let's get to work. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alex, let's take a look. Uh, four turn weight throw. I'm kind of a fan, if you ask me. I think it's a quite smooth, quite chill. Very good patience, pretty solid rhythm and great hype energy at the end. So one more time. Yeah! Overall, I think it's a pretty solid throw. Um, if I were a coach and I saw this, I'd say, hey, good throw. Um, but we're gonna break it down frame by frame and we're gonna check it out. So. Uh, I think the biggest thing I see is kind of like the first catch. Um, but I guess we'll, we'll take a look. Uh, so this kind of sling start, you know, off the hip sort of thing is cool. You're starting square at the back of the circle. As you come through on the sling, you can see you're, you're shifting back over this left side, which is great. You're opposite of the weight. Chest is okay. It looks a little down, but not a big deal. Your left side is very consistent. Shoulder, knee, hip, ankle, kind of all in the same line. Right hip not sinking down. A little bit back, but not a bad, not a bad thing. Uh, left side's consistent. That's what's important here. Uh, left leg, you're not straightening it out at all, but you're not deep on it. It doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you're not straightening out here, that's good. You're you're nice and bent on this toe turn. The orbit's nice and flat, keeping the shoulders down, forwards, long and relaxed, flat orbit. Uh, I think this is a pretty solid entry as you come around. Uh, interesting, interesting. Very quick, little slick little right leg movement here in single support, kind of crossing over, stepping across. And this is, okay, so this would be, the, I think, maybe the one thing I would change. Uh, I think this just looks a little bit unnatural, especially if you watch it kind of full speed. But um, so as you turn, you can see you have a lot of weight over on this left leg. If you look at where your body's going in sickle support, it gets pulled around and you end up over this left side. And then, which, I mean, I used to, then, I used to think it was not a bad thing, and now kind of like 50 50 on it where like i don't think it's the best idea to be all your weight on your right leg uh but i'm not entirely convinced that like you want to be totally on the right leg either so it's it's a it's a thing that i'm kind of working through right now personally um but i think yeah if you in entry i think this is pretty slick pretty chill i think you should just try to keep a little bit more weight back on this right leg like i like let's say if yeah, arbitrary number 10% more weight back on this right leg. Just a little bit more to keep you centered because, like I said, you can see the left side's nice and stable, but then, like I said, your body kind of gets pulled around. And I imagine that's where you lose a little bit of tension. And then you can see to get around, uh, you have to step this right leg across rather than put it down or just, just put it down. So, like, you kind of, it looks like you're kind of forcing this right leg to come across the body, especially as. Like right through here, looks like you're kind of reaching that right leg across instead of getting a full rotation of the weight uh, and letting your foot just kind of come down naturally. Um, so a little bit more weight back on this right leg and entry, I think it'll help you out, be a little bit more centered, be a little bit more balanced, have a little bit more tension. Your chest and your hip posture, torso angle, whatever you want to say this is, is, uh, is decent. We'll see how it develops from here on out. Like, it looks like your chest is down a little bit, your hips are back a little bit, but we'll see what happens after this first catch. So, catch, and your posture is good. Like, you're, you're, you're 
nice and upright with the torso. Your feet are underneath you. Looks like your hips are almost underneath you. Your right hip is the important thing to have underneath you here. And then as you catch, like I said, you had very good patience in this first catch. But like I said, I don't think there's much tension here. It's kind of you just getting, you're, you're rotating as the ball is also rotating. I think um, you can see your body's shifting over as the hammer shifts left a little bit. I think if you'd feel a little bit more tension if you were more centered here uh, with this right leg a little bit more under you on the catch. If you were a little bit more over this right foot in this first catch with this right hip a little bit more underneath you, I think that'd help a little bit more, keep you more centered. And then uh, from there, <clears throat> you can see your right foot is definitely pushing and working, but it's got this weird kind of uh, pinching of the knees. Not a bad thing, but uh, you can see it's like your feet don't quite turn the most naturally. It looks it just looks a little forced instead of just kind of letting the ball go around and letting that foot turn. But that being said, your right leg is very stable, which helps keep this left side very stable once again. But then it seems here, yes, yes, okay. So as you come through, your hips are under you, but then they stay under you. They don't really work up at all. As you see, as the ball comes through here again, you can see there's, it looks like the chest comes forward just a little bit once again. And that's kind of, uh, once again, like I said, where you can kind of lose some tension. Um, ideally, in double support, you want your right hip and hips to kind of work up into, kind of towards the hands towards the ball, especially as the ball goes left. So we'll see as the ball goes left. Let's see what happens. Like left side's nice and stable here. Right side's a little bit, you know, not the most connected. Like I said, this foot isn't in the knee. It's not quite turning in the same sort of fashion, but it looks like you still have good pressure with it. But yeah, you can see here. So once again, this, this position is not going to be the most effective, efficient position here. Um, you got to kind of think of almost each turn especially towards the end of double support, almost as a uh, triple extension. Uh, you're not necessarily extending your, your feet or your ankles, uh, but you do need a good hip extension. You need to get these hips up into the hands, into the hammer, into the throw, the hips up to the high point, whatever you want to say it is. But these shoulders need to come back behind the hips a little bit, and that throws your, honestly throws you out of balance. But then if you have good connection with the weight, the weight pulls you back in balance into the next catch. And that's kind of how you accelerate the hammer and single support. So um, that's definitely going to want to, what I'm going to title the video, how to accelerate the hammer or weight and single support. Um, but yeah, you, if you're, if you're leaning backwards over here, as the ball goes around the left, you create a torque on the hammer, you pull down on the ball with your own body, and then that accelerates the hammer. Um, like I said, chest is forward a little bit here. Hips just aren't uh, getting up into the throw. And that's kind of the big thing. Outside of that, like the rest of your turns are pretty nice. You, this looks like a little bit more natural rotation. You catch. You're a little bit more stable. Your hips underneath you a little bit more. You see your chest starting to get back a little bit. Level shoulders. See your hips get a little bit more forward towards the ball here, which is good. And you're still pretty flat relatively in terms of orbit. Shoulders are down. Catch again. Once again, a little forced rotation. I think you got to turn a little bit longer. And you can see you kind of come forward and land on that right foot a little heavy. This left side gets a little tight. And then level shoulders. Left shoulder starts to go up a little bit here as this right side kind of loses tension. Orbit's still pretty flat. Shoulders down. Sneaky right leg getting in there. And then you catch, shoulders out, flat catch, which is nice. And then you come through on the finish, and you can see that left heel comes down, and you can see this left side really kind of yanking upwards. But you get through the finish nice and strong, because you have pretty good right foot pressure, but it doesn't really turn in the textbook way, which isn't a bad thing, just an observation. Um, so, yeah, just to run through it one more time, break it down. Like I said, just try to, try to stay back on this right leg a little bit more in the entry. Just a little bit more back on the right leg, and then you want to try to keep your chest up maybe a little bit more, get your hips under you. The entry doesn't matter so much, the toe turn doesn't matter so much, but it does affect how the rest of the throw is set up, so it might help to think about it a little bit in the uh, in the entry. Also, might think might help to think about uh, kind of cranking this left side back a little bit as the ball goes through zero. 
you know, open that left side up backwards to 180. So as the ball comes through zero, think about sending this left side back to 180, set the direction a little bit better. That'll help you have better direction, number one, as I just said. And then number two, that will also help you stay back on this right leg just a little bit more. And then you catch in the, from there, it's just a, the same kind of rotation over again and again. Left side should go back to 180, hip should go up into the ball. You wait for it. But this is this is kind of the big disconnect right here between the start of your throw and the end of your throw is this first catch where the, hair, the hips aren't quite up into the throw. You do a really good job staying patient and letting it go from there. And your hips kind of get into it a little bit more. But like the next level, I'm not sure how far this throw went, but the next level, whatever it is, whether it's 18 meters or 20 meters or 22 meters, the next level is going to come from getting your hips up into the throw, as you can see. So like this sort of movement here, you see your hips work up, your shoulders back behind the hips. If you can get that in each turn, that is going to be the big thing that gets you the next couple of meters, I think. So it's also just a great way to, especially if you're a smaller guy and you're not like this giant six foot seven weight thrower, uh, that's kind of what helps you uh, as a smaller guy, leverage your weight a little bit better to throw hammer away farther. So yeah, dude, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Happy to help. If anybody else out there would like a technical analysis, go to grip and rip.co sign up in depth technical analysis, $20 for a one off or $15 for a subscription monthly. It's up to you. Sign up for the monthly one and cancel it. If you don't want to, uh, get one every month. I really don't care. I just want to help you guys out but I also need to make a living. So I'm sure you guys understand. So thank you for watching. Until next time, Sean Don signing off.